Hello. <laughs> when I said that, it just reminded me of someone that I know. Hello. <laughs> it's Brenda Schwader. Welcome to Sorita Sawarita. Sawarita Casita. Nice to see you all here. I hope we're going to be getting lots of friends coming and joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am all about wire and found objects. You might see here about how much I am about found objects. <laughs> Can't miss me today. There's not any being stealthy with these on. No, sir, Rebob. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, we are uh, we're going live today, and we are going to be all about this. Am I kind of bringing it up here or not? Let's see here. Is it going? Oh, it's up in the corner. Look at that. Yes, that's not where I want that. We're all about this is the bring it on week. This is the bring it on month. Uh, we started out with this awesome mesh netting um that is so super cool to work with um but i was ch i was asked to be challenged this month and the challenge is all about using sort of outlier things things that aren't just like natural to add as a charm or as a anything some things like this uh but cool things and so um yeah we um we started out with this as i said this netting and i got it in isn't this stuff cool i got it in uh do, 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 and it looks like genie um in this beautiful royal blue um and then i got it in this bright grass green and some white and we worked we worked around with some of that a couple weekends a couple weeks ago two weeks ago and then we work with some pony beads. Uh, last week, let's see if I have a picture uh, in here. Um, let's see here, here, here. Yes, so here was the white uh, netting that we put around this 3D um, treasure trap. And it looks like I don't have some of the other ones up here. Surprise, surprise. Um, gosh, where are the things that I just put on today? This is pretty silly. Huh. I wonder if I put them all up on the, oh, yes, I pulled one of my fancy tricks here. So we're going to have, we're not going to have full coverage of this, but we're going to be able to have this in our little upper area here where I'm supposed to put like little uh, pins and things. So let's get rid of this one here. And it's going to be up here, guys. You're going to have to squint a little bit, but um, that's what I did. So let me see here. Where are they? Oh, no. No, it looks like I, who knows what I did. No, that's what I did. Okay. So I don't have them all. But uh, this is what we're going to be working on today. Last week was pony beads, aka fiber craft beads. And uh, we did a really cute little project with those. Um, but this week, this was my challenge. This cool 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 um thing and darn it it's in the wrong place that makes me really mad um <laughs> but um you can kind of see here i don't think you can probably see my cursor but these are so i'll just bring it down to here this is what i came up with um this is well actually let's let's just go to our down um our down air thing here and we're going to make this uh, the biggest one. So this is what I'm talking about since I was so prepared and not prepared at the same time. So this is the leopard head, leopard <laughs> head clasp. And it actually comes uh, this same type of clasp where it has this sort of ring in the middle with like a wolf and a, a, a snake and a dragon, guys. And I think with both dragon, that might be it. So up here, um, I think there were six though. Let me see if I can see them. Ugh. So yeah, snake, dragon, wolf, leopard, and there's one other. I think it might be a bear. Uh, but anyway, so there's good news and bad news. These are super, super cool and super, super easy. You can kind of see the super easy application that I did. Um, but not always the easiest. Uh, they're already sold out. 
already sold out. Um, and what I'm going to do as I come and look at the comments. Hi, Mary Burns. Thank you. And look at that. Sherry's here. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Yep, we're kind of doing a little bit different lightning thing here today. Francis is here. Night, long time no see. Thank you, my love. Um, but what I want to do is put in here, this is where you're going to go when you, let's see if it'll just fill into all of the different places. Looks like so far so good. Um, this is the bit.ly. Um, uh, whoops, yeah, I'm going to have to do it again for some of them. So if you, some of you are getting this twice, what happens is that it doesn't always want to fill into all the different platforms that I'm streaming to. Um, but sometimes it takes two times and it looks like it's making it. Anyway, so this is the leopard clasp and it's a ring. I'm just going to show you here. If you, this is a sneaky little guy. There's a little, a little trap right here, a little clasp, a little spring trap. And then basically what you're going to do is carefully, carefully and put it up. So I will tell you that this application here for this is the best way to work with this take this clasp too. You can kind of see how easy it is to just put it on when everything else is rigid right down here. So that's that's pretty super simple. But um, yeah, so we have this uh, this going on for us today. So but as I was messing around, um, and this is one of these things you guys probably see this bracelet all over the place. This is actually a pretty small version of it. Um, it fits me, but I would like to see it be a little bit more uh, larger for, for me. I have kind of a medium wrist. I have a large paw here, but a medium wrist. And so I, I would say that this is kind of a small, uh, a small um, uh, size small kind of application for this. Because the first thing I did and I guess we're just going right into this, guys. There aren't too many other announcements today. Um, is that I saw this um, at the Tucson Gem Shows. And this is something you see all over the place, this kind of application, where you're basically having a lot of thin wired, um, you know, just these sort of little cuffs to go around, but then they're all gathered somehow. And I have a couple different things to show you in order to gather. This would be more sort of like a, a mid connector where you might put, put it in between to have a smaller clasp. Uh, and again, that might work for a different clasp than this one where it really kind of want things rigid so you can put it on yourself. Um, but then also there are these, depending on how many you want to go with. And this is just a sort of like a little collector thing. And it's just kind of a nicer end than uh, just, you know, very simple, nice kind of, con I call this an end connector. Um, or you can do what I see a lot of times is just basically sort of this down, this, this barbell link here. And this is fun if you want to have, you know, kind of like put some other types of, um, of little tassels on or something like that. Um, and but I don't like it just alone because I think this looks a little like to me, whenever there's a loop, I want to fill it. <laughs> How about you guys? Is that something you want to do? <laughs> um, let's go on up to this view here. No, I think it's this view. There we go. I'm going to switch back and forth because I kind of like to see you guys or have you see me. So I thought this was cute to kind of just put these cute little Irish wax linen tassels on here. And I just kind of made some tassels around two of my fingers. You guys have done that before. But then I cut them way down to, to have, oops, frozen. There we go. Uh, to have these little mini tassels on here because I thought that those were so cute. So the color combination here is like every possible aluminum, John Bead aluminum wire. Um, uh, 18 gauge wire color that was anywhere near the color of a leopard. And um, so that was kind of fun. And this is, uh, I believe this is like 13 of them, um, just so you can kind of know. And I I did use this smaller end, uh, end thing right here at this side. Um, so I remember, let's see here. Oh, I also wanted to, I'm going to pull up um the other the other link that i want you guys to have 
this is the link. So what the links that I'm giving you guys are all about the craft shop on Am whoops, nope. Do it right. Uh, on Amazon. Um, and this is a, a John Bead uh, craft shop setup just for you guys so that you can have access to these things retail, right? MSRP. Because you know that John Bead is a manufacturer, wholesaler, distributor. So they want to protect their distributors, basically. Um, so here is how do you get this. And we've been having so much fun with this aluminum wire. Okay, we're gonna we might have to do, take two runs at this one too, but let's see how this one goes. But I wanted you to have the all wire because today we're working with both the 18 gauge and the 12 gauge here, um, because because in doing the whole like research and development designing portion of this, I basically designed two. <laughs> and why not pass them along to you guys, right? So this is what the single. Uh, 12 gauge looks like this is just the, this element here and this is how it basically went on I could not really get because of the design of how this connects from the from the leopard not jaguar head <laughs> the little thing here um, to easily get about three but I thought it was a nice enough weightier piece and I thought the other thing that we might want to do um, after all is said and done, if you wanted this to be a little bit more ornate, you're kind of a more is more maximalist as I am, uh, is that you could also kind of weave in and out of this um, and uh, add another color. Probably you would need to go to like a 26 gauge, just as, you know, really thin gauge, and then just sort of make this all as one. But I, I hesitated doing that um, just because I liked these colors. And because I hadn't thought of it yet, really. <laughs> you know how things that just your designing gets richer and richer as you go. Oops, okay, I gotta try it again. It says it didn't get to, and now that's a jig page. So we're gonna try that again. All right. So what are you guys up to today? Looks so great. Okay, I got all these. Then it just takes super long to get all of these these comments loaded. But um, yeah, I thought that this was super cool. And I'm realizing that I didn't have my jig here. So you guys are going to get to see me do this jig one. Or, well, I want to show you this one on the jig. So, so you think that there would be a jig around here that would be empty. But no, because I am way, 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 way too... <laughs> Way, 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 way to, what, I never get this right. Um, hi, Clarice. Hi, welcome. Where are you from? Recognizing your name. Um, way, 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 way to lazy is the word to, um, to empty a jig before I put a new one on there. So this is the one that I had the so many chandelier earrings on that we did that was so cool so let's just kind of see if we can't tip this over here and get a better view of what you can see what's going on there you see my lap and everything here and I'm just going to do some adjusting because that's what we do we got a lot of stuff going on here so Let's talk about your weekend plans while I'm doing all this silly stuff here. I just have to quickly get this out. Good thing I have my, my fancy dancy, right? And, and then the other one won't be too hard to set up. Hi, Jan. Where are you from? So we're all about wire here, you guys. And what you see me doing is that I'm taking this template off of, for those of you who aren't familiar, taking this template off of the jig bed and getting it ready for the next one. Generally what I do is I work off jig for these, um, 
But as I was saying, this particular project, it's really nice to have this oval. It's actually a bangle sizer cup. So that's what we're going to do. Hebron, Kentucky. Nice. I have. My husband has family in Kentucky. Well, actually, Evansville, Indiana, which is so darn close to the border. I think some of the family actually lives in Kentucky. I'm sure of it. We went to the eclipse in Kentucky. We stayed. We camped out at a um, a distillery. Oh my God, was that fun? So so fun. Okay, so this is the this is the jig version. Okay, so we have this on vel vellum, so you can see my hand underneath. And so this is where I'm just going to. Um, oh, you know what? Do I have? I don't even have that thing. <sighs> miss Miss Missy. Okay. Uh, we'll get there, guys, but I just want to also let you know that these are available for free on the John Bede uh, Facebook page under Files. It's called, it is called Hand, oh, Bead Projects and PDFs from John Bede on that Facebook page. And so let me just get that out for you here as I am, here we go. Um, yeah, here we go. And I'm going to go get the rest of the stuff I need because here I go. We're going to blame this on being an artist. So you can kind of see here, here's another one. And this is the one that I was actually working on. What I do to be honest is that I am so used to working on the jig and I can, I just, how I think um, that I do all of my designing on the jig. And then basically I make a pattern for people who don't have a jig. So I think that's still pretty cool. So let's grab this one off of here and then we're going to put it onto here and then I think we're just going to use like two, two of these guys. I could have just worked on this, on this one, but I wanted to show you how the, um, how the vellum went on. All right. Um, there's no room for everything. <laughs> We're just going to use it in my lap. Okay. I found the hammer that I'm going to need too over there. All right. So what I want to show you is this. So basically what I've got is, is the pegs and stuff that I need right here. And then we're just going to kind of tuck this one underneath or not. And what we do is we line up these four bigger ones and the four are uh, these, these sort of black, these are corner tack um, ones. You just line this up to the four on the most extreme corner drills here. And then you have exactly your alignment. So that's pretty important because there's a lot of information here, a lot of specific information. Um, that if you don't get right, it could, it could bite you in the butt. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab something to poke a hole through here. And there's also something that you can do that with, but that's where it goes. So if I want to can kind of do that. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, especially that, um, since these are already sold out, Carmi has told me that um, these are going to be back in in June. So watch the site if you want to um, right around that or right, you know, those that last week in May. And if you're in love with these like I am, you can get them then. Okay. So see how I just got that right in there. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to use 
let's see so there's sort of an option here this is what I use for that smallest one you can kind of see down here there's three little um, purple dots and those are where these go okay one on each side now here's where you can build that extra small size or depending on how big your clasp is to go in the middle of here um, and here's sort of a medium size and then this super small one if you just have some sort of focal bead or something that you want uh, to use that's why this one's called add a clasp or not because it will fit fit something like this okay basically where you have this large expanse of thing and this is what I use just for this one and I use the far reaching ones here the shortest ones um, but you can see here for this one that I really went in and went into these this uh, the smallest one here um, and then just so you can kind of see here for my medium size wrist this one's not been hammered yet um, that's kind of a nice I actually open it a little bit but um, to put it on that's kind of a nice cuff thing you've got enough room to get it out right which basically when you're building a cuff you want to have enough room to get it on and off uh, but you really don't want um, too much room that's going to be falling off of you if you're grocery shopping you're digging your purse or whatever you're doing okay so let's actually build another one like this here another one like this so you can kind of get the idea of what this basically is to build this one because I know you guys are going to come back and you're going to say hey remember that those are back in stock I have mine now Brenda and so now where do I go to get this <laughs> all right this is the part where we need the cheaters so okay that's enough of that here uh, what I was basically saying with this uh, that I was beating around the bush is that if you ever see one of these email these uh, videos these tutorials and you're like I just don't know where to, if you got this or whatever or if I'm not explaining it or you're not at the right point in the video do uh, email info at johnb.com and uh, ask them so I saw this on Brenda's you know live broadcast where do I find it all right but I also want to let you know that all of these other uh, whoops that's not it where is this it's Etsy one here uh, a lot of other things are available of my now that's a jig templates those are the ones that have this specific jig lineup to it are uh, at www.brendashwader.etsy.com all right let's get on over here let's see we got some comments here uh, so Jan said she's 20 minutes from Cincinnati and Indiana okay got it hi Jan what a pretty face I love seeing that and you're saying what type of jig is this Jan this is the now that's a jig yes it is thanks for asking it is my brand um, it's currently on sabbatical so sometimes I just I just put two people together um, to uh, one person was selling and another person was just in the right place at the right time to buy um, I will tell you that this is a boutique brand it does a million three million and three things and so it's not a cheap one um, so even uh, at the um, at the uh, reduced prices or the, the used prices they're still there's still an investment but you know, if you're like me and you uh, make wire jewelry and you have you do production, this is the tool for you. Okay, so you can see that I basically just use uh, there's a screwdriver that comes with this, but there's a lot of screwing in to do here. <laughs> so I always like to have that uh, battery powered, or um, yeah, I guess they're all battery powered. So, okay, so we've got our setup here. I'm not going to really put this uh, swivel lock in right now. This is all the information you need. Here's the cuff, partial cuff setup, which is this. But the, all the other setups that you need to do this, remember I was, I can just put these here by them. So this is that barbell setup we got here. We can do that. 
uh, we have both of these setups here. This is sort of a, a, a dual setup, depending on what you have. Like there's a little option there. And then, like I said, if you ever need this mid connector, it's here for you. I think you'll know when you need it. For this particular, um, to, for today, we're not going to need it. Okay, so I'm looking right here for this partial cups cuff setup. I know that I need eight to ten inch length, and why I'm being so big in that measurement is that this is the you know these this is like the eight nine ten. Okay, and I think that actually works. It just seems four, and I'm, I'm working ahead, so now I'm like it's not really as fresh and top of mind as as it usually is. Okay. So, you know what, just to be, just to do an entirely different thing, let's go ahead. This is actually the copper color. Uh, there's actually another brown color that I have never gotten. I would have loved to have gotten that too. But this is the 12 gauge aluminum wire that you would get just in a big thing. And, and you know what, there's like 30 feet here. That's just a ton. So we're going to go ahead and lop some of this off because I don't want to be bothered to measure as usual. I'm just going to go way more than the 12 uh, with my cutter. Okay. There we go. I'm going to put that back. Do ask uh, any, any questions you have. And Jan is saying, love your jig sheet. I know. I know. I'm so proud of this. Um, Jan, you probably don't know um, my assistant, Sarah, but we put these all together. They're all done in-house, and we both know how to use this, so we're always just like, is this the best way to put this together, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, I will tell you a little trick for this. There is not a whole – oops, let's, let's get Jan out of the way here. Sorry, Jan, I didn't mean to say it that way. <laughs> uh, there's not a whole lot of room in here, you guys. So what I do when I have that – is I am just going to unscrew these a tiny bit so they're lying. They're still um, very stable, but they're up, up above. You can kind of see here what I'm doing. So then I have a nice stable peg, but I can still get it around there, and I'm still getting my shape. Basically, otherwise I would have to go out here, and then I'm I'm just jeopardizing my, the shape that I want to get. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm centering this at the top. Aluminum is so soft and so pliable. That is so simple to do with my hands. But if not, uh, if you're not working with aluminum for this particular project, grab your, um, your bent nose pliers, your chain nose pliers. I really like working with my hands with this because, as we know, this is so soft. We don't want to mar it. Um, and so I'm basically just holding this here. That's another reason that I haven't installed the, the swivel lock for this particular piece here, because it has ridges to be able to sort of grab into that wire and hold it in place against whatever puck you're starting with. Um, so it's really nice for people with hand issues. But with aluminum, we're just going to show it this way. Okay, so I'm holding it here, and I'm just sort of holding this around. I'm just forming this. You can see it's just like butter forming it against the edges of this puck. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit different way. So what, what I did with this one is we did, I turned a lollipop on top uh, orientation to this. So you can see that this loop on the top is centered at the point that the wire comes in. So I'm calling that lollipop on top because it looks like a tree. There's a trunk and a centered, you know, uh, top of the tree. <laughs> whatever that is. Um, but this way I want to show you another option. And this is the option that I saw when I was walking around the gem show. And so basically it kind of comes around and it kind of hides all that loopage, right, um, that, that we would build upon. It kind of breaks away a little bit. There's a little gap in here, which I don't usually suggest. But sometimes this is what we need to do for a particular um, design right and so I've got this all the way around and I've gone I've gone all the way around that peg that was elevated right but now I'm going to come back this way and actually I'm just going to get this out of the way just by going this I always want you to go too far instead of not far enough when you're making loops so I'm coming around this side and doing the exact same thing now 
What I always teach, don't I, is that you want to have things on the same plane. Right now, I've got a lot of gap in here because I did elevate that peg. But what I want to be able to do here is just gently with my chain nose is make sure the part that went around first and the part that came around second are on that same plane because I want that form of that, that peg underneath it. Okay, so I'm just going to back up a little bit. And I'm just pulling on this part that I know is going to get chopped off so that I can get as perfect a form as possible and go all around that. Otherwise, I'm going to have this really sort of be like, well, I, I did it the way you want, but I don't have a nice, crisp, round loop. I have something else. And that's generally the reason is that things aren't aren't aligned on the same plane. You basically, I have a term called spiral staircasing, and that's just going to distort your loops. So, you know, there's a, for certain things that we have to give up when we're doing certain work, right? And so uh, when we're working on production, which this piece backing up to the reason I really want to show you this on the jig is you have this production tool here, right? And this is what's going to help you make three or 13 of these that all are perfectly the same, right? I mean, that's sort of the key to this design um, and have them be consistent and smooth and consistent. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull this off here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. There is also a, um, a lifter wrench, if you are familiar with the jig, that you can get. I did such a good job of forming this around that tiny peg that it is, ends up being a little bit hard to do. And so you can kind of see here that I've kind of got not a perfect sort of curve because I did kind of come down against these uh, forming in the air instead of against the, the um, puck. But I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to clip that off right where the wire starts to meet itself. Okay. Nice. And this is where you would do a little bit of filing right here. We're not going to bother with that right now because we want to just sort of, and I'm just fit, I'm just kind of like making that curve you know, more aesthetically pleasing just with my fingers. You can see the difference here. This one's a little, eh, you know, you know, it's not that aesthetically pleasing, but this one comes up and it just kind of like your eye follows it um, a lot nicer. Okay. Get in there. And again, I'm just ever so slightly. If you're working with wires that aren't so soft, just get in there and just kind of like, you know, bring it around with your round nose. And here you have that beautiful shape. I can even kind of do that. But you can see that basically this is sort of the difference here when you're doing this sort of like, when you're sort of like trying to hide this loop to this one where you're like, I am part of this design and I want to be seen. <laughs> And that's kind of always the difference when I'm choosing. I used to never choose to not do a lollipop on top. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes that's just what you want is you sort of want that sort of infinity type of, you know, it's kind of like that infinity edge pool. You just kind of want that's cool not to be able to see where one thing ends and starts. And with a lot of your findings, I find I find with the findings that that is uh, what I like like to have happen. So just for today's um, th um, reason, I'm just going to kind of like push this back to where it's not going to be the prettiest, but I want to show you how we're going to put these together and we'll just make another one. Let me know, guys, if you have any other questions. So see how I just did that? I just made, took this one and bent it back. Okay. So I'm just kind of going back in here like this, and I'm just, I'm just sort of smoothing that back out. I think I'm going to do a little bit more. 
And again, this one is, is, is not what I would do for, uh, for a finished piece, but you guys get the idea for the demo. Okay, so we've got two together. And um, I don't know. Let's just do another copper color one. And by the way, I'm still pretty good at my measurements because I only have this much that I cut off. I like having um, more of this so, so that, you know, as you get better at this, you'll be uh, less wasteful. But it's also kind of a production thing. You uh, balance between, you know, being able to be efficient and fairly quick and not wasting a lot of, you know, metal. With the price of uh, silver and copper right now, it's a little bit more of a, a thought process, right? Okay, so again, just to kind of show you again, let's start on this other side first. And we're going to go around with my fingers. And I generally like to make sure that this one is where I want it before I go ahead and do this other, this, uh, the second one, because a lot of times how I adjust this one right here, right, so I can pull that further around is going to help me do this one better. And it'll help the whole. Alrighty. That is super duper fun. Okay, I gotta say I'm pretty pretty psyched about that. So we're gonna pull this up and off again. Just cajole it. <laughs> Here we go. And Lynn Hobson Sutton, and I didn't see that you were here. Welcome, welcome to the show. Sometimes what I can do is just sort of like back off, back off of this too, and just tight, and loosen it a little bit, and it comes off. But I like them tight because then they form right around that, um, right around that peg nicely. You get that perfect, perfect, perfect loop. Okay. Not too, too bad. I'm going to go back in here again. And with just the fingers, we're going to you know, kind of make that pretty loop. This one, I think I could have cut that a little bit closer, so I'm going to do that. That was not a nice cut. I want it to be perpendicular. When you're cutting it perpendicular, and that was like a total slant cut. Okay, I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so now we've got our French block, right? And this awesome nylon pliers. For those of you who are new to wire, I'm hammering this on both sides. I'm, I'm, I'm actually making it all on the same plane so it's flat. It's nice and flat. It's not warbly or wobbly. And I'm hardening it at the same time. Okay. So these are all going to be nice and flat, especially when you see them together. That's when they're really going to see any differentiation. These aren't flat. Flip it. Okay, and I think this is the one I didn't do yet. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jan. See you on the flip flop. Jan had to go. All right. Okay, 
so I would say, you know, I kind of like, as a lot of us do, having, um, you know, odd numbers of things. And I kind of like when you're doing, a, uh, you know, a kind of a multiple that you have um, three minimum. I don't know, kind of just where I'm coming at this. And so now um, you can fill this with whatever, you know, obviously this particular piece um, is too big for this design, but maybe just with one, it would have worked. Right. Um, but basically you can kind of see what I'm doing. What I did here is I just added open and close as you would a jump ring right around this leopard head clasp and get them on one side and, and add them to the other. And you can see here, this is why we are, hammering everything flat because you can see here that lines up really nicely and beautifully um, even here we have um, we have just a little tiny bit of air but it's pretty perfect I mean we all we still want that homemade look right um, but here I wanted to show you just for contrast that I didn't put everything in a in a line. Uh, what I did here was you can kind of see this black one is coming from actually it's it's at the top or one of them there's two there's two close to it and then it just sort of trails down to the other side and that just kind of gives it some some interest here too you can kind of see the same thing with this orange one right here kind of nice um, but with this particular um, with this particular uh, um, design right here, all we really need to do now is is combine these, right? And so we can kind of come back to here and put in a few more of our of our uh, um, kind of like doing maybe the shorter version of that one. And let's see if we can get our little poker tool here we can even use a needle nose pliers and so we can use the smaller one now the thing is if we do this with the 12 gauge that is a lot we're asking a lot of that huge wire to do such a small finding so let's do it in the 18 gauge and just check that out and see how we like that Alrighty, and again, we're just going to use this is the end connector one setup versus that barbell one that's the end connector two. Okay, you know what? And let's actually do it just so you can see. Now, this one, this is a little bit more open. So basically, let's kind of come back here and show you. Where is that little guy? Hmm. I somehow lost that, but I can show you here. So this end connector right here is just a nice long oval jump ring, right? The connector. Um, so this is what it's going to look like, and this is the size we're making with the 18 gauge. But I also want to show you the 12 gauge just to show you what is going on here. And I'm just using one of the scraps, right? Why, why cut off an, another piece? And just holding it here, you can also use the swivel lock if you have hand issues, okay? So I'm kind of coming back around here and just making a nice, beautiful parallel piece. So I guess what I was saying is it would be harder to make this, this, um, this barbell loop, right? There we go. And that is pretty gorgeous, I just have to say myself. So already you can see just how using a, you know, a jig and going around something that is already very um, set by itself. Let me say it's set by itself. This makes sense only to me. Um, that is very consistent and hard to work around, consistent um, that You just have this lovely, consistent shape that comes off of that. Okay, 
So I'm doing here is I want this. I always have to think about this. This one's not easy for me is to make that but a join and I'm coming in at this perpendicular to the cut to the uh, actual piece, I should say. I have my fingers out of the way. I know sometimes it's like nerve wracking to watch me, but and then while these are um, you can kind of see because of the players, a lot of them, the times and this one is is really not perpendicular. Let's get back in there with that cutter again. I'm having cutting issues today. Okay, just the tiniest bit that I that I came off of there, but it's going to make a big difference in our in our efficiency and just working together here. So let's take a needle file. Watch our new manicure. And file those close. You want to get, you know, so you make a nice cut and you're your 75% of the way with your cutting. And it saves you time with your filing. This is where you get the upstroke. This is where the cutting is. But sometimes I just think it's a lot more productive to keep going back and forth here. A couple different schools of thought on that one. All right. So... Basically, I'm going to open and close this like a jump ring, and I'm going to line up my, my little guys here. And for this one, I'm just going to I'm just going to load those all on. I have a little bit of a longer side, and I can actually make this even smaller here. This one has a peg between it, but for this particular project. I'm just going to rock that closed again. And again, I'm able to do this with just my hands because it's aluminum. You guys are probably thinking, she's superhuman strength. Yes, I do. No, <laughs> I don't. And so I'm just making sure that everything is nice and straight here. And I would probably futz with that a little bit longer if we weren't live, right? But you get the idea here, okay, of this connector. And again, I would probably make it shorter if it were only three, but now I can add more here. And it's just kind of a nice finish to this, as you'll see here, right? And this was the, the skinnier one. So let's go ahead and, and do make a shorter one, just so you can see that, since I told you we would make it in the 18 gauge. I always like to show you um, a, a few different ways to do this because, you know, my design isn't the be-all and end-all, and you want to make it your own. I know you do because you are all very excellent designers or will be. And so I'm going to go around this one. So I just moved that one peg in a little bit, especially those of you who are watching on the repost and want to make some variations you'll know how to do that a little easier. All right, so let's work with, this will just give you a little bit more of a contrast here. We'll just work with the orange. I'm just going to work right off the coil and bend right around here, wasting a whole lot. <laughs> But I know you wouldn't do that in your studio. Is that the worst thing that would happen? I mean, we have this beautiful um, wire here, but it is quite economical to work with. I always see it. I just went a little bit goofy there. And you'll notice that with this 12 gauge one over here, I did not hammer that one. I could have, but I had less of a need to, so I kind of forgot. Um, so we'll show you the actual hammering part here. Again, you want that flat. Here's where I keep grappling with this. Basically, I'm just looking at that very end there, and that's where I want to be flat. So it closes nice and flush. And let's do indeed hammer this one. I 
see just a tiny, tiny variation there. It's not perfectly straight across. So I'm going to kind of get back in here on that straight away and just do a little nudge. Okay. And sort of bring this back in. All right. So I'm going to open and close this. And actually, this one's kind of coming up. Okay. Open and close it. Open it first. And then come back here. This one I wanted everything to be the same. So you can either, you can kind of, I mean, straight and not crisscrossing. <laughs> so it, it's going to give you, this is wire. This is, this is not for the faint of heart here. <laughs> it, it wants to do what it wants to do. It's like taming string, but hard string. Okay, so I've got get, making sure that each, each of these are not crisscrossing. I'm working them back. They want to crisscross right at the end. And so I'm holding it here and kind of checking it from a distance as well. Okay, so let's go in. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and make sure that that, because I'm putting that, that butted joint in the middle. I just want to make sure that it's holding and it's that what we're seeing is in the middle and it's going to stay in the middle. But the hard part is that you want to make sure that it is closed. So I'm kind of peeking down in there and making sure that it is lining up. Okay. So, so we can see here for the, this, this one with the three strands, it is working um, a lot prettier. You know, it's holding these a lot more um, taut, right? For the three stands, it could actually fit a fourth one in there, probably not five, than this one that is just sort of like too big for this. We would really need a five or a six um, strander, I guess, filled with element in between here. But you get the idea um, of, of what, to, what you want to do with that um, for your own particular project. So... Here we go. Now, for this particular one, if I just wanted to stay with the three, I probably would um, just probably do that barbell one, but I would do it with this, uh, that 18 gauge wire. Just my own particular POV. <laughs> my friend Azalea said, use the word POV. So now I'm trying to be cool and be like her. Cool, cool beans. Um, well, we have been chatting here for almost an hour, and I want to show you guys um, what we're going to be doing next week. I can't believe this week of um, – let's go back up to this brand here um, – the Bring It On month. So I had four different things, and then next week um, – I'm working with these gorgeous, I don't know if the camera is going to do these justice when I kind of put them in these little packs here. Let's go back to this particular camera here and just show you. Can you see these are iridescent pearls and there's a yellow and an orange and a turquoise green. And I just love these. They remind me of like the Caribbean, uh, these beautiful colors here. And then what I did was, let's go back to, here I got, I got, um, I got mixed up, <laughs> is to show you the design for next week. So this design is so cool and so, um, so doable for so many different things. This is the cool design for next week. And what we're doing is the key to this one is this, can you see that? It's one finding. We've got a finding of one, two, three. That's called the Trinfinity finding. And you could do the same thing with a chain if you wanted. But this is so much cleaner and minimalist. And, you know, I'm a maximalist, but I like efficiency as well. Um, and then so you can see that we've got this 12-gauge beautiful fuchsia aluminum wire. And so we're adding to that Caribbean theme. Let's see if I can put them on. What do you think of that for an ear wire? Do you see that, baby? It's long. 
here we'll put it in front of the the white see it <laughs> I just thought it went it went well and it was uh, more of a okay it's this one da, 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 da. can't think about it too much there we go cute huh I love it I want to twist it so I wonder if I'm going to change the orientation of that loop because right now it's sort of like this way but do I want it this way I might have to change the orientation of that loop we'll talk about that next week all right any other questions you guys I have had such a good time with you guys so <laughs> thank you Joyce that's so sweet of you to pop up and say hello and say genius I'll take that. Thank you. Um, and it, but they're so simple. And of course, you'll get the pattern for free next week on the, uh, the John Bead Facebook group as well. Um, Bead projects and PDFs from John Bead. Look at that. It just sometimes things just like work and the synapses, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So you're welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much. Um, so it's beautiful here. I know that it's, you've got some snow in the Midwest. I'm so sorry for you guys. Know that I'm thinking about you. We were actually in the pool yesterday. It was a little, little cool because of the wind, but as long as what every, everything that was submerged and wet was under the water <laughs> and everything that was dry was above the water with the wind, we were, we were cooking with gas. Okay, watch me put this one back in. Ah, pretty easy. But this is also 22 gauge steel. These, in case you want to know, so these are these little like cocktail forks. I think these are vintage ones. Aren't they great? That color is probably from some tiki bar or something. Uh, so those are actually like little forks. And then I found these fabulous plastic uh, strawberries. And of course, these are already had a loop, so that was really easy to make earrings out of. I just love them. Also, guys, if you are, let me see if I have this banner here. I would love you to join me on Instagram. My handle is at Brenda Schwader Jewelry, all one word. Please join me there. I would love to see you there. Um, and just a little bit of a, um, a thing, our next Great Bead Extravaganza, where we do a whole weekend of demos and um project tutorials i usually do something with my now that's a hammer tool uh is going to be in june and um so you want to make sure that you get on that so that you get all the notifications about that for sure let me see if i've got that on the right place i sure do so those dates <laughs> are covered by this banner let's get rid of this one uh preview night is june 11th and the show dates are june 12th through 13th we always do a little something fun um and um yeah so um thank you uh lynn knows she must be a great beat extravaganza person already so that's so super duper um that is about it for today you guys um Thank you so, so much for coming on. I see we have a Facebook user that is late, but you know what? Whoever you are, you can you can watch on the repost. Uh, also, just a little hint here, too. Uh, if you show up as Facebook user, it generally means that you're watching from, which I appreciate you watching from anywhere, but if you do want to join in with comments and things like that, do watch from uh, the Brenda Mike Schwader uh, or Brenda Schwader Jewelry uh, Facebook page. This is a little something, something. All right. All right. Mwah. You know, I love you so, so much. Thank you for joining me. Helps me keep what I'm doing. And you know, let me get, get back to here, that um, John Bede thanks you as well. Love these guys. Awesome company. Okay. Mwah. See you later. See you next Thursday, 2 o'clock Pacific. Adiós.